Hello, this is Tim McLemy out of Tyler, Texas. Today's date, 6 8 of 2021. It is 12 19 p.m. And for anyone who sees this that does not know me, I'm Tim McLemy. I work in the forensic computer and cell phone industry, and I deal with digital data. So part of that has become ransomware. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna briefly run through ransomware. So everybody that doesn't understand it, they think, well, if it's on the dark web, that's nobody knows how to get there, what that is, all these other things. Well, that's not the case. It's actually fairly simple. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to deal with ransomware or getting to the ransomware websites on the tour. Now dealing with the terrorists on the other end, that's where the complication comes in. But the narratives that the government and the media keep putting out on their television and the internet, I disagree with. They're kind of cherry picking the entire events and they're focusing on the big companies. They're not focusing on the small people, which is typical government action. So in the beginning, we have to get to the Tor browser, which is this little browser right here. You download this off the internet from download.com or go to the Tor website, and it gives you a list of different items in there, but my you list the browser. And you open up the Tor browser the same as you would a Google one. And once you get on the Tor, well, that's where the work comes in. So install your Tor browser, and then jump over here to the regular internet, and you can simply Google or go to Reddit or various websites. This one here, ZDNet. ZDNet, they listed all the known ransomware. These are the terrorist groups from all over the world. And it's not just Russia. Russia is just kind of the catch-all. Uh, the Ukraine does great work whenever it comes to their hacking, the way that they do it, um, they're just very, very intelligent. You can People rule out third world countries as not being intelligent. That's not the case. They may not have an infrastructure, but they have some extremely intelligent people there. So do not count them out or rule them out. Conte Group is one of the largest groups. It's one that I've dealt with quite a bit here recently. If I want Cuba or whatever, so I can just go through here on the regular web and I will eventually find where I can get the links on the dark web. And I'll show you what a link looks like. Something else that I've noticed is the vast majority of these ransomware, they use Zoom info. And whenever I ask them to send me something, uh, proof of data or anything about the company, this is what they send me. So, and this is a dental company that is currently locked out in St. in Kansas City, Missouri. So now that I've found, I've got the tour installed and I saved the links. I just put it right here in a little notepad. So I'm copy and paste them. I have a Proton email account. That's the one that they prefer. And it works well on the dark web on using a tour browser. So this is the Conte, the one I just showed you a minute ago. Conte News is what they refer to it. Now in the United States, what they're doing is illegal. And we despise them for it because they're killing the little man. They're killing the small companies. I have companies that are borderline bankruptcy and actually may go out of business over it. If they don't handle it correctly, they most definitely will. But to these individuals, they're in a country where it's not illegal. And they look at it as a legitimate business. So, you know, it, it makes it very difficult. I would not hold my breath that the United States government is going to be able to really do a heck of a lot to help you, especially in the next year or so. Maybe their new you know, program to get more involved and treat it as terrorists will, but that's yet to be seen. And in the meantime, we have companies like all these here that are going to be suffering. There's, this here is a real estate company in California. 
On here, it shows they posted it May 20th, 2021. It's been looked at 12,856 times. But on this one here, they're wanting to sell this data. Whenever they offer data for sale, that normally means that that data has a lot of personal information in it. It's gonna have a lot of information about individuals, their identity, their social security numbers, and their financials. So they will move to sell those. Uh, if, if this group here didn't want to purchase it or whatever and, and try and avoid this, then now, they now risk getting it um, sold to someone else who will. Now, a lot of these, they're going to publish. They're going to publish samples of the data. They're going to do a lot of different things to prove that they have them. Here's another group that I've been dealing with, Happy Blog. Um, there's a law firm. If you're in a law firm, if you're a lawyer and you see this and you hear this, you better buckle down. If, you're, if your website uh, talks about the, the great settlements that you've received through personal injuries um, and things like that, they're gonna come for you if they, if they can ever beat in on you. They will most definitely come after you because if, if you've been winning tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, they, they know you've got money and they're gonna try and shake you loose of some of it. In a law firm, you have a, a major issue with HIPAA violations and other things like that. So you have to take it very serious. Um, there, this is an international event, so a lot of these aren't even in the United States on it. Looks like another law firm on it. And then there's just page after page of them. Um, it goes on and on. They will show, uh, different types of data. Uh, this is a West Texas home builder. If you did business with them, then I hope that they have sent you notice. There is a statutory requirement in Texas law where an individual or a company must contact individuals if they meet a certain criteria of a data breach and you need the most definitely be prepared to do that. And that alone could bankrupt a company. If you're sending out notices and you have thousands of clients or thousands of pieces of data belonging to clients and it costs you four to $6 per notice, you're fixing to spend a lot of money and that's not even dealing with the ransom itself. That's just the collateral damage from it. So the, these go on and on and on. But once you get to the tour, before you can find these websites, they have what's called wiki hidden tours. And I'm gonna try and knock a little bit of the glare off and post this right here so that you can see that this website, this doesn't say www.abcnews.com. It doesn't say www whitehouse.gov. All of these are unique and there is no search engine that just really separates them easy like you see on the regular web. This is the most difficult part of dealing with the dark web is understanding where the data is at and how do I find it. And as you go through here, we can see where they have this wiki has them in categories uh, how you can do western union exploits counterfeit united states uh, dollars paypal it goes on and on but today we're talking specifically about ransomware so i'm not going to get off on a rabbit trail this is just another hidden wiki once again it's going to give you different links and tell you about them this one here this is the email and there's proton mail right there that's the one that's preferred it's a swiss based email service it encrypts email locally on your browser um, and it's a end-to-end -end type of encryption so it's very secure being a swiss company the, the swiss are famous for not cooperating with anybody so i don't think you're gonna get much cooperation out of them and just one more. So once you get into the wikis 
and you get the websites, then you can understand more about what is on the dark web. But we go back to where we started, which in this case is the ransomware. So I'm going to turn this around here and, and, and tell you a little bit more about ransomware. So with ransomware, the, the problems that it, people have normally are they get a lockout screen. The lockout screen's got some very important information on it. If you ever get a lockout screen, save their lockout screen. Take your phone out, take a photograph of it, because people like me are going to want to see it later. It's going to give us some very, very important information. It's going to tell us who actually did the hack, who actually has your data, and an email to contact them. They will respond. I have contacted them for multiple uh, businesses, and I've been successful in getting them to remove some of the businesses from their their publication, and at least give the business time to make some decisions on what they're going to do. A lot of the time, people, the, the companies or individuals, they get the lockout screen, they, they call the IT department, and, and hey, IT, I disagree with them on some things, but that's because the forensic guys like myself, we come from a little different cut of cloth on the computer world. They primarily focus on getting the machines back up and running and getting the service back restored to the customer of the business. Where to me, that yes, that's important, but more important is what did the client lose and what's about to be exposed and then what will be the fallout from the exposure. Uh, that can be done at the same time your IT departments are working on fixing the problem. The, uh, the thing about these uh, lockout companies that are overseas and they consider themselves a company because remember, it's not illegal over there. It's a crime here and they're criminals here. They should be prosecuted, but we were never going to get to them. Um, whenever they get involved, it's business to them. So when the IT department is working on your network, trying to get you back up and running, there needs to be communication immediately made with the individuals that locked you out. And then there's certain things that we do and we want to talk to them about. Now, this is where it's outside the wheelhouse of your IT departments. Uh, you want to have someone who understands hostage negotiation. The other individuals that have communicated with them that I know of in the United States are like myself. We've all been trained in hostage negotiations due to our prior careers in law enforcement. So it's basic negotiation 101 on it. Uh, we want to slow the pace down. We want to at least give our people, our clients, the, or the people we're helping the opportunity to communicate with their legal staff, with their accountants, uh, with law enforcement. There are obligations to report, and if they report it, that's up to them. I will volunteer at no cost to answer questions, and I do on a daily basis almost in the past four or five months about these. I'm not going to charge anyone that calls me and says, hey, Tim, we're locked out. Where do we start? If you, tell, if you call me and you tell me who locked you out and give me a few minutes, I can tell you, if I don't already know, what to expect from that group, their MO, how do they normally operate. And I will give you all of your options. It's up to you what you choose to do. Um, and I'm not going to charge anybody for that. Small businesses have been hurt bad enough with COVID, myself included. And then to have this hit, it, this is just a one-two kill punch. I have a current customer, client, that's a 51-year-old man, super nice guy. He started his business almost 30 years ago, and he survived through COVID. He has 12 to 14 full-time employees. He's had his data locked out. IT company came in, got his data back. He thought it was fixed. No one ever told him that, hey, they're going to post your data on the dark web. So whenever it began being posted, he was actually contacted by a media outlet, a news outlet doing research on this. And he reached out, law firm got to me, and I've been assisting him ever since. I've got his data off the dark web, and I've bought him two weeks so far of uh, it not being available for download or even on there so that he can deal with his legal staff, his attorneys, his accountants, and make a decision on what he wants to do. If he does choose to try and settle with them, that's his decision. 
And there is, there are some that say, well, you know, you need to contact the FBI. Sure, contact the FBI. They're running, the vast majority of them are reading a script. And that script tells them to advise the victim to go to their website, put some information in their website. That's about all you're going to get. Um, even the, the pipeline on the East Coast, they paid $5 million to get back up and running. Now, yeah, there's some rumblings out there that, well, maybe they've got some of the money back or, or you know, that there's some way that they have um, been made whole again, but they have never truly been made whole because of the downtime. And that's a large company that deals with the infrastructure. If you're a small company, if you're a small law firm, I don't see the government coming to your rescue. You're not going to have the cavalry charging over the hill. Um, I wish you could. Local law enforcement at every level across the nation, their hands are tied. We're talking about a potential international event. I've yet to see a ransomware operator operating in the United States. They're always going to be overseas and most likely in a country that has no extradition treaty with the United States. So with that said, you're pretty much on your own. And there's a lot of decisions that have to be made in a short period of time. So the very first thing we want to do is try and slow it down. And that can be done. Do not ignore those lockout screens. They're very, very important. And it will tell me what you're potentially looking at in the future and how to expect it to go forward. But in the meantime, we can wait on our government to continue to do stuff. If the data gets published, and especially the law firms and the medical locations, you have the HIPAA stuff. They like banking, even if they don't get the bank accounts, because the bank accounts are usually encrypted. Um, but if they still get account information, then the FDIC gets involved because there's federal regulations there. And there's a, just tons of other industries that have regulations that require a data breach to be you know, published, uh, at least a, to the governing agency and then eventually contact the individuals who lost their data, their personal information to it. So I would take what you hear on the nightly news with a grain of salt. It sounds great, it sounds wonderful, they're, they're coming to the rescue. In reality, uh, from everything I've read, they're just now beginning to create some kind of clearing house for all the reports to go to so they can try and figure out where their problems are worst and where it's coming from. Well, we all know that that's going to take our government three times as long as it should on it. Um, again, if you're a local business, I, there's at least two dozen businesses from uh, the Canton to Texarkana down to Lufkin area. They, they are currently locked out and or their data is currently on the web, on the dark web. Uh, those businesses have not followed through and they have major problems. Some of them are very large and well known. I'm not going to name them out of respect for them and them being a local company. I would gladly help them at no cost unless they want me to take lead and communicate with the terrorists. At that time, that's a, that's a whole other level of stress dealing with them. But a phone call is free. And if I can help somebody, I'll be more than glad to. Being from a family that runs a small business and being a small business owner, I, I truly sympathize with you on it. So anyway, um, it was a quick video. I hope I didn't ramble too much. But the main thing is, if you are the victim or if you have had your data taken and you're the victim of identity theft by losing your data, there's things that you, you have that you need to know about and options for you. But do not, under any circumstances, blow this off. Do not think it's going to go away. It will not go away. They will post all of your data. I have one that they put up nearly 200 gigabytes of personal data, including all the tax information, all the checking registries, everything. So it's a very serious issue. But I'll turn this around here so I can stop the video. And once again, it's Tim McLemy. I am licensed in the state of Texas. And I will be signing off.